Hello and welcome to the Vonda Knits Podcast. My name is Kayla and I am your host on this knitting, crocheting, and making YouTube channel. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with me today for episode number five. Um, if you're a new viewer, welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back and thank you for supporting me. Um, also, if you would like to follow me elsewhere on the internet, I can be found on Instagram as Vonda Knits and on Ravelry as Kayla Vonder Knit. It is Tuesday, May 30th. It is 7.45 in the evening and I am ready to share some of the mostly knitting that I've been up to and just some life things. So yay. <laughs> we will go ahead and start with finished objects. Um, last time I did the podcast, um, I was working on the first finished object I'm going to show you. So it's nice that it's done and I get to um, show you the finished product. So first off uh, with the finished objects, we have the Muscle Burra hat by Isolde Teague. Um, I knit this for my son out of Knit Picks Stroll Glimmer, which is the Knit Pick Stroll with Stellina in it. Um, they do not make this unfortunately anymore but if you can find it floating on the internet the colorway is scarlet on the red and then the bluish blackish color is midnight heather and it is so pretty so the muscle burr hat um it i don't know if you know of it um it is a like fill in the blank pattern so you basically start on one end and you measure or you knit, I'm sorry, you knit up until you can get gauge and then you just put in your gauge count on in like the calculator and then it tells you how long to make your hat. But yeah, the Stroh Glimmer is a, I believe it's 75, 25, so yes, so 75% Superwash Merino, 20% uh, nylon and then 5% Stellina, but it is so sparkly. And yeah, the hat, you start at one end and you do increases and then you knit and I stopped halfway and changed colors and then you knit until it's time to do some decreases and then you make the insides kiss and then you can make a hat. So I used a US size one 2.25 millimeter needle and when I did the cast on, I started with a magic loop and then I did a pinhole cast on so I could close it up later after I knit it and then once I got to what mm, it was like yeah I think it was after the decreases I switched to a 16 inch circular needle and it's my Chiao Gu interchangeable needle set but this is the same US size one 2.25 millimeter and then I just knit my tube so ta-da you just make the ends kiss and then you can flip up the brim and have a cute little hat. I knit the child slash adult small for him because he's four and so he has a little kid head but it fits him really well. It's super cute. It reminds me of fire and ice so <laughs> I called it my fire and ice hat on um, Ravelry <laughs> but it's cute and he really likes it. I know it's kind of warm for hats in late May, but it will be ready to go for him this fall. So that was my first finished object. And then, oh, I was also working on these last time I podcasted. These are the Vespertine socks by Lindsay Fowler of Larks for Knits. And this pattern came from her book, um, Salt and Timber. And I knit these out of plies in Hellhounds yarn, the Twee base, which I believe is iron. And the colors are um, warmed caramel and then violet femme. So oh, that is true to color right there. And the purple and the brown, and then it's got the tweed flecks in it. And it feels very, it feels a little bit more rustic. So it feels a little bit more toothy, but I think when I, wash it um they'll kind of soften up a little bit but oh they're so lovely 
They're a nice tall sock. Um, I knit these on a nine inch circular, my Chiaogu needles. Um, US size one, 2.25 millimeter. And yeah, it was a fun sock. I actually started these, whoops, I started these in March and I got distracted by a sweater and <laughs> a few other things. So it took me a while to finish them, but they are so lovely. And the patterning is fun. It's like a kind of like a, um, what's that called? There's like a stretchier ribbed pattern, but then there's a tweed. That's what I wanted to say, like a tweed pattern here. So you can like, oh, uh, they're just really pretty. And I love these colors together. Originally, I bought the purple for myself and then I bought the the brown for my husband to make a pair of socks for him. But then I saw this pattern in the book and I was like, the purple and the brown would be beautiful together. And I love them so much. So, hooray. Beautiful, lovely socks. I knit these for myself and I did knit the 64 stitch size, which I think is a medium. So yeah, usually I knit 64 stitches for myself on socks. And then for my husband, I knit 64 as well, but I size up to US size two, um, 2.75 millimeter needle for his socks. But these are for me, they're lovely, they're nice and tall. And I will be wearing these a lot this fall. And I'm very excited, they feel very warm and cozy. And I can't wait. So, moving on, let's see. Oh, I have a half finished object. So as of a Friday, um, what day would that have been? The 25th? Yeah, I think that Friday the 25th, Summer Sock Camp hosted by Kay of The Crazy Sock Lady has started. And the Crazy Sock Lady podcast, maybe. Yeah, the Crazy Sock Lady podcast. Um, Kay of that has started her summer sock camp, which I always love to participate in. So I started a new pair of socks. There we go. That is true to color. So this sock yarn is from the Yarnable subscription box. I believe it was the February color whip. I have the tag. Let me look. It's her plush sock base. So it's an 80%, 20% um, super wash nylon blend. But yeah, here it is. Yes, it's the love language on the plush sock. And it's 437 yards per 100 grams. So here's the, the tag. But yes, so I started this pair of socks um, for my niece because I knit her a pair of socks last summer. And my sister is like, she wears them every single day. And I think she would like more socks. So I asked her what color she wanted and she said purple, but it is a lovely purple. There's some light dark and dark purple in there and a little bit of, there's a little almost pinky in there. But yeah, so I finished this sock. I cast this on, hmm, I think Saturday morning. And then I finished this sock last night and then I started on the other sock. I am knitting these on a magic loop. Um, US size one, 2.25 millimeter. And um, what else did I wanna say? Oh, for her foot, I cast on 56 stitches. She is, I believe eight going to be nine. And she wears like a size four. So I find that 56 stitches works well for her feet. And I did knit them a little bit bigger so she can kind of grow into them. But she seems to just be very excited. I was like, what color do you want? And she was like, purple. So. I had to do a little stash dive, find some purple yarn. But they're so good. And I have my little mushies on there from Firefly Notes. It's a moral. I don't know what. That one look, might be an oyster. Yeah, that looks like a golden oyster mushroom. But, sorry, I've had mushrooms on the brain. We'll talk about that more later. But, <laughs> so, these socks are living in my little food truck bag that I picked up from my local yarn store, 614 Knit Studio. I have got, here it is, caked up. 
love it. I need to make some like yarn cozies or something because I just, they get wild in there sometimes and they get all tangled up and mixed up and just out of control. But here's the second sock. I started this last night and I have just been working on it, just plugging away. So I'm done with the cuff and the leg and then I've turned the heel and picked up stitches. So I'm now on the gusset, working through the gusset decreases. So I'm hoping her birthday is um, not too far away. So I'm hoping to surprise her for new socks on her birthday. I think she would really enjoy that. But I forgot to mention that the colorway on those socks are, where's the tag? Okay. Yep. Love language. So it was the February, 2023 yarnable box. The colorway was love language. Um, and I think it's a really good purple for an eight soon to be nine year old. <laughs> Yes. So another work in progress I have here in just, whoa, that sun is moving. Um, it is in a, just a clear plastic bag that I picked up from Knit Picks, which I use this quite a lot. I think it would be good for like, if you had to like go somewhere like an arena or like a sports game or something where you had to have a transparent bag. I think this would be a good choice, but I use it quite often, but anyway, um, we are working on another muscle burrow. Oh, that is way more pinky. There we go. That's closer. That, that is true color there. So this is a, a my second muscle burrow hat. I am knitting this for my daughter. Um, it is alpaca cloud from Knit Picks, which I used in my flying foxtail shawl. Um, I had, I think two Hanks left over, 250 gram Hanks. Um, and I think, hmm, I wonder, hmm, sorry. I was just wondering if they're, I think they're 200 yards for 50 grams, but it's 100% alpaca. This colorway is Algernon and I am knitting her the adult medium size because I want her to be able to wear this for a long time. <laughs> um, and I have switched over to my US size one um, 2.25 millimeter, sorry, the TV just turned off. My US size one 2.25 millimeter needles. Um, I knit past, again, um, I knit, I started it on a magic loop and then knit to the increases and then switched to the 16 inch circular. But I also started it on a US size one 2.25 millimeter. So yeah, just lugging away. I haven't worked on it very much. Um, I started it right after I finished my son's muscle burrow, the red and blue one, because it was just such a fun, relaxing knit, and we've been kind of like busy lately. <laughs> I wanted something I didn't have to think about too much, but made some progress, and then I got distracted by socks. So um, I don't know how much more I have to knit on this, but I think it's quite a bit. So it'll probably be around for a little bit longer <laughs> as I work on it. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to say about this. I'm just knitting this in one color. Um, I have, yeah, two more um, 50 gram cakes of this. And then I had, this is what was left over from the shawl. So it's not enough for like, I probably am going to use probably two and a half total for this hat, but I think she'll like it. And I think it'll keep her head really warm this winter and she seems to be pretty excited so that is good I'll tuck that back away and then my final project I don't know if it's just me but in this summer I get this urge to knit blankets and it's so strange because it's warm in the summer and the last thing you know most people want to do is be covered in a blanket but I think it's just because a lot of the blanket patterns are not super intricate. They're more like a relaxing knit for me. The the patterns I pick anyway are more of a relaxing knit. So I think that at the end of a long summer day, as it's starting to get chilly at night, I thoroughly enjoy just sitting and being cozy in the house and then having like a blanket to knit on. So with that in mind, oh, I'm drinking 
peppermint tea tonight, which is my go-to when I podcast. But this cup is from <sighs> Edible Arrangements. I received this last year for Valentine's Day from my husband and the kiddos. They got, they purchased like, my daughter picked the mug, but then it came with like the fruit and stuff in it. And then Harney and Sons peppermint tea. So good. Anyway, sorry, we needed a drink break. It's been a long day. The kids are out of school, so it's like, <sighs> just entertaining kids all day long. Last project is a pattern by Skinanigans over on Ravelry. It is tangled. I'm so sorry. Hang on. <laughs> oh, come on now. Do -do -do. It is the Northeasterly blanket, but it is a scrappy Northeasterly. So I will start here. So my process with yarn is to use my yarn and then once I get down to under 20 grams of a specific cake or ball or whatever, I put it in a clear um, container with a lid. I don't know, you probably can't see it. It's up there on the top, it's like right here on top of my yarn cabinet. But I put it in there once it's under 20 grams and then once I have 100 grams total of the little scrappy balls, I put it in a magic cake. So I magic knot all the ends and then I wind them all up into a cake. So I currently have this giant iridescent bag full of magic knot cakes. This is from Great Wolf Lodge. Um, it's actually like a beach pool bag, but I love it for my knitting, um, especially big projects. It's huge and it's holding all of my cakes of yarn in there. And if I like spill my tea, <laughs> at least it's in like a waterproof ish bag, but yeah, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have ten magic cakes in here, and I have started with the oldest cake to do the first row here. And I went ahead and knit it to how long, sorry, the sun, Ooh. I went ahead and knit it to how long I wanted it to be. So I'm aiming for a, a large throw, which is 60 inches by 72 inches. So I went ahead and knit the first row here, 72 inches long. That way I wouldn't have to like have a, I, I don't know. I'll, the pattern says that you can like knit and then like up until like 10 inches and then you can start another row and go across the rows and just add slowly. But I wanted to just go all the way up so I knew exactly how long I wanted it to be and then I could just continuously add instead of like trying to balance a bunch of different rows that are halfway <laughs> halfway done and then they're all on waist yarn. Anyway, I mean, other people have chosen to do it differently. That's just how I chose to do it. So this pattern is written for fingering weight or decay weight. Um, and I debated for a while if I wanted to just knit it in fingering weight or if I wanted to buy yarn to hold double with it so I could do a decay weight blanket but I am still trying to adhere to my stash down 2023. So I decided just to go ahead and knit a fingering weight blanket. And that way I figured it would be good as we go through, like as we transition from spring to summer and summer to fall until it's like really, really cold and I get out the heavier blankets. I think this will be a nice in-between blanket, but the pattern is really good. It's a nice chevron pattern. And you can either do one long strip and then add to it, or you can do like varying lengths and, and knit on it. I am knitting it on a, oh, keeps trying to run away, on a Knit Picks um, US2 2.75 millimeter wooden needle. I think this is, I think the colorway is like called Cassian or something, but I've had these for years, but they're just wooden a long fixed circular. I used to use them for socks a long time ago before I decided that I preferred metal needles, but 
yeah, so I'm right here. I think I'm, I just started my third cake, I believe. So all of my cakes are um, like 70, I wanna say maybe 99% of them are 75, 25 Superwash Merino and Nylon. There may be some like Blue Face Lister yarn in there, but I think the majority of it is Superwash Merino and Nylon. Ooh, this one I dyed myself, isn't that nice? Is that green? Mm, this was with food coloring, <laughs> but it's so fun as I'm knitting along to see like the yarn and I'm like, oh, I knit this project using this yarn. But yeah, so we are just plugging away on our little northeasterly blanket. I am just knitting it in the fingering weight and I think it will be a nice throw as we transition into warmer and colder weather. But yeah, I don't know. Oh, I haven't knit on this in a while. Now I kind of want to pull it back out even though it's summer sock camp time. But no, I think I've got, yep, three. I'm working on my third one there. And I'm about halfway done with this third strip. But yeah. So yeah, that's all I've been, I haven't been knitting very much to be honest. Um, I guess that'll move us into, <laughs> into life stuff. So if you were just here for the knitting and the making, thank you so much for joining and I will see you next time. Bye. Drink break. but yeah so I finished hat finished socks then a half finished pair of socks and then another hat for travel knitting the blanket and then I do have plans to cast on a few more pairs of socks but I just haven't yet I've been a monogamous knitter again for the most part um and I haven't been knitting very much we've been just crazy busy the kids are out of school and my daughter is very much an active child. She likes to be doing something constantly. So we have been going to a lot of parks, doing lots of walks around the neighborhood, doing lots of building tents. Um, we've been going on bike rides. So we're just trying to keep her busy. This last weekend, we had family in town. My um, husband's sister came in with her husband and their little girl and we had so much fun. Um, she was just growing so fast. So we took them to a park and played and then played around the house. And it's just, it's so wild to see how fast those kids grow. You forget. And then you see them and you're like, they got so big, <laughs> but it was good. And then we went, it was Memorial day yesterday. So we went to visit some of my family and it was just nice to see people we haven't seen in years <laughs> because it's just pandemic times. So it was just good to hug my grandma again <laughs> but yeah so we've been visiting family also not much knitting i did plant a like raised bed garden so i planted two cherry tomatoes which are doing really great they're still alive i planted two i think it was a beefsteak tomato plants one is alive i planted two summer squashes one is alive and then i planted is that it cherry tomato yeah, my daughter brought home some flowers for Mother's Day from school a few weeks ago. They were zinnias, so we've transplanted those, and those are doing okay. And then I planted kale and lettuce, and they have given me the hardest time. We started them inside in windowsill planters under the lights with warm conditions, and I watered them, and we got fungus grow <laughs> growing on them and then the, the the lettuce just fell over so we ended up like picking the microgreens and eating those in a salad one day and I replanted them and the minute I put all of the plants outside after the last frost they are like thriving I don't know if I was treating them too well but the lettuce and kale looks insane it's huge I'm so excited that it's finally doing what it needed to do <laughs> that that made me happy. I was very sad. I'm like, why can't I grow anything? And my husband's like, because you're YOLOing it. You need to like read a book or watch a video. I'm like, I probably should. Anyway. <laughs> oh, I also planted mud. Well, 
not planted mushrooms. What is the word? Not, you're not really planting them. Inoculating mushrooms? That doesn't sound right. Anyway, I have two two and a half gallon food buckets that I drilled holes in and then I, I pass, not pass, sterilized, sterilized. Yeah, I sterilized straw. I heated it up for an hour in boiling water and then I let it dry overnight and then I purchased some blue oyster green spawn. Blue oyster mushroom green spawn, sorry. They're mushrooms, blue oyster mushroom green spawn. And I mixed it up with my straw, I packed the buckets and then I stuck them in a closet, I stuck it in a closet for a week and a half, two weeks, two weeks. And then I noticed that pens were happening, which penning is where you could see the little mushrooms poking out of the holes I drilled in the buckets. So I then moved them from the closet that they were hidden in down to, we have not we have a partially finished basement and there's an egress window, which is the perfect place to grow them. Like it's moist in there, but they get indirect light and then they still get fresh air, but it's nice and cool because it's off the basement. So anyway, they're thriving. They're doubling every day at this point. They pinned they were, they, there was like the nodules that were starting to happen on Wednesday last week and then the temperature dropped. So I put them out overnight on Wednesday and Thursday they were outside because it was only in the 60s, which is good pinning conditions for blue oyster mushrooms. And then I left them out overnight on Wednesday and on Thursday it warmed up again. So I brought them down to the egress window and they've been doubling in size and I just missed them like two times a day with some water and they're just, I don't know what I'm gonna do with all the mushrooms because I did not anticipate all of it like flushing. So I'm gonna like put a call out to the neighborhood and be like, does anyone want blue oyster mushrooms that I grew in my window? You can have them. So. I'm really excited. I did tell my husband that if I could not grow the mushrooms, I was going to give up on planting things because mushrooms grow everywhere. <laughs> and I'm like, if I can't make them grow, I'm going to be sad, but they are doing great. And I'm very pleased. We've also just been busy. Like we painted the foundation on our house and we're doing some landscaping on our house and just like some fixes that we've been putting off like right here. We accidentally scratched that when we put, we bought this dresser when we moved into this house and it scratched up the wall. So I need to just touch up some painting. We've just been putting like random things off. Our light over our porch broke. So we need to replace that. Just like minor repairs around the house that we've been putting off. Um, we're gonna jump onto that and just finish up a few things. And yeah, we're just landscaping multi, oh. <laughs> Tears of the Kingdom came out and it is amazing and that's where most of my like free time is going. So before I would knit or read and now it's just Tears of the Kingdom. That's like all I want to do. I think on Mother's Day I played for eight hours straight. Like my daughter sat beside me and we just played and she is a big Zelda fan. So she was excited. I'm excited. It is such a good game. Like I, I have never been as, as excited for a game release as I was for that one. It has delivered on everything I wanted. It is absolutely amazing. So it's so good. It's so good. I I just can't stop playing. <laughs> so a lot of my free time is going to um, Tears of the Kingdom, but yeah, that's just minor repair things around the house. Lots of Tears of the Kingdom, a little bit of reading, some knitting, and then some gardening. I feel like I always start to like do more outside things once summer comes. We have more time and then the weather's nice. So hiking is a lot, it's a lot easier to plan for because it's sometimes, you know, when you're in the woods, it's cold. So it's hard to be fully prepared in the spring and fall, but summer hiking is really nice. So we just try to get outdoors more. And I always start like a little garden in the summer. So I don't knit as much, but I do socks and blankets and then I always participate in summer sock camp. So there will be lots of socks around this time or this, the next few episodes, but yeah, I feel like I flew through that. <laughs> um, again, my name is Kayla. And if you wanted to find me elsewhere, I am over on Instagram at Vonderknit and on Ravelry as Kayla Vonderknit. Um, I will try to link them 
in the description box. I forgot to last episode, so I'll do it this episode. And then I'll leave some extra notes. If there's any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, yeah. So I'll keep video gaming and I'll keep knitting and growing my mushrooms. And, you know, be kind to yourself and take care of yourself and take care of each other. So, bye.